Welcome to the Yukon, North 61. This time I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm doing a public service kind of announcement or video for Yukon Backcountry uh, Hunters Association. I'm on the executive. So I'll post this on my channel, but I won't uh, monetize it. And this is a little bit about Rifle choice for bison hunting. So here's a funny thing. While I've been hunting big game for 48 years, um, in that time I've got about 60 caribou, a bunch of deer. Over the last 12 years I got uh, five or six moose. I've never got a bison. I've been out with guys. I've gone left. They've gone right. They've run into bison. I haven't. Or I've gone the other way and they've gone the other way and I still didn't run into the bison they did but it's gonna happen one of these times I do know that bison compared to moose much much heavier muscled much much more athletic as far as like short-term power more squat bigger boned uh and they have a caliber minimum and there's a reason for that there's not the same caliber minimum for moose because moose are far more dainty bison are a power athlete and uh, they require a little bit more bullet weight and power. One thing you have to uh, think about is your recoil level. Uh, how much do you shoot? Because the more horsepower you have, the more recoil. So some people poo-poo the 30 out six, but at 22 to 25 foot pounds of uh, recoil energy, that's a lot of recoil for people who are just starting off. I'm started looking at the skidoos, and getting them ready, going out December the 3rd. So, made up this little garage here, I'm gonna have to get my skidoos out. So let's talk a little bit about power levels. So, uh, first power level is 2,800 to 3,200 foot pounds, and that's your marginal calibers. 30 out six fits in there. Uh, 444 Marlin is in there. Uh, 358 Winchester and 338 Federal are in there. 3, 348 Winchester, the old uh, favorite of mine, is in there. So these are firearms which <clears throat> can be used on bison legally. And they're uh, at the bottom end, which means they kick less. And that recoil is really important, especially for new shooters. So if I was a new shooter, I, I don't know if I'd go out and buy a Magnum. I might just get a 30 odd 6 or equivalent and go hunting because they have enough power and they're not going to hurt you too bad because they're all kicking around 20 to 25 foot pounds on your shoulder. So that's uh, level one. 30 odd six, 180 grain bullets, 2,800 feet per second, about 3,200 foot pounds. Let's see what that does. Five gallon water pails, then into some hard books. These are 180 Acubons, and let's see what happens. And then you can go slightly over with uh, some of the 300 short mags, uh, um, and you're getting into the 35, 3600 foot pounds, or you can jump up right to 4,000 foot pounds. And there you got 338 Winchester, 358 Norma. A heavily loaded 450 Marlin from uh, Browning would be in there. And they're going to kick you harder. Now you're looking at 30, 35 uh, uh, foot pounds on your shoulder. That starts to create a, a bit of a problem for some people because they start to flinch. And bullet placement is your single most important piece to killing stuff quickly. He's big. You hit him right behind the foreleg, looks like. All right. That's a nice shot. 450 Bushmaster, 250 grain Hornaday flex tips. You got to shoot the bullet right where you want it. So make sure you're picking a caliber that uh, is not hurting you and that you can handle really well. 
If you've got a lot of experience, you can go all the way up to the 5,000 foot pounds, something like a 458 Winchester, 416 Rigby, maybe a heavily loaded 416 Ruger, um, 375 uh, Ruger, really heavily loaded, won't make it. But now you're looking at 60 foot pounds, up to 60 foot pounds. Now you need to be really experienced to handle that. But if you can, more horsepower is always great. There is no replacement for displacement. What about trajectory? I wouldn't worry too much about trajectory for a beginning uh, bison hunter. If you're going to shoot at long range, you already uh, know more than this video will purport. Uh, let it be said that when you go with extreme velocity, make sure your bullet construction is really, really good. One thing for sure about range is that those marginal calibers like 30 out 6 you know, they have lots of trajectory. I use mine as a sheep gun right out to 500 yards, but you're going to lose, you're going to run out of steam because you're only starting with 3,000 foot-pounds. So by 200 yards, you're probably down to around 2,000 foot-pounds. And how low do you want to go? Maybe not much lower than that. So that's where the bigger calibers come into play, like the 300 Magnums, as you get more range, you get, you know, equivalent ballistics, uh, terminal ballistics to the 30 out of 6, maybe at 300 yards as the ballistics of the 30 out 6 at 200 yards. So you can stretch that a little bit with a more caliber. Just as important as caliber and foot pounds and ballistics is bullet construction. I've heard of a lot of guys have gone out with their 30 out 6s and uh, come back and they're dissatisfied and they think that the 30 out 6 isn't enough gun. That may or may not be true, but you gotta give your rifle the best chance by picking good bullets. So if you pick a bullet that's a simple cup and core bullet, it could come apart. It's designed more for deer, sheep, those sorts of animals. Uh, you need to have some way of keeping the core and the, which is made out of lead usually, unless it's a homogeneous bullet, you can get copper only bullets. Um, but you, with a regular uh, lead and copper bullet, you want to create some way of keeping that as one unit, not falling apart, exploding, all those sorts of things. So let's talk a little bit about bullet construction. I always forget something. You want the bullet to hang together because it penetrates better. And the penetration, you need to get that bullet to slam into the animal, expand, create a big wound channel, and then keep going as far as possible. And if it falls apart, that limits penetration. It might limit penetration so much that you don't get to the other side of the lungs. If you do a lung shot, you want to you want to collapse both lungs. You don't want to collapse just one lung. And that's a big animal. You might have to go through some bones to get there. So the bullets hanging together increases penetration, and penetration is what you need to kill that animal. Start by looking at some 35 caliber bullets that I uh, tested way back in uh, 1992. So I've been at this a long time. Uh, so here's the scope of bullets. One bullet that's a fantastic bullet is not there. Here we go. That is a Nosler partition. You will notice right in the middle, there's a big band of copper. And what that does is the bullet will mushroom down to that band of copper and then stop. It'll lose about 30% of its weight, generally 35 maybe at the most. It'll create a really great wound channel. And then that back will hang together like this. And we'll look at it at an angle here. And it'll penetrate. So this is a 225 grain uh, 35 caliber bullet. You can't break these apart. Uh, unless you drive them at like some kind of hyper velocity. You know, another bullet, which is a little bit better than just a cup and core bullet is the Hornaday Spire point, and I'll show you close-ups of that. So it's got a cantilever. There's the cantilever there. And that cantilever creates a little inner belt that kind of holds it together. Once it goes past that, it's got the interlock, and I'll show you a close-up of that interlock. And that basically grips the core. Uh, so that's not a bad bullet, but 
in heavy bones, it'll still break apart. And then you've got a cup and core bullet. In this case, uh, we're gonna go to the 225 grain Sierra. And it's a boat tail bullet. The, there's nothing keeping that core together except for friction. So that core of lead can slip out at any time. It's got a nicely shaped jacket, uh, which supports a really good mushroom, but this can easily slip out of there. And the boat tail actually makes it easier to slip out because there's nothing hanging onto that bullet. So if that copper splits to the back, back or over expands, you're gonna get a core separation, but only after a fair bit of penetration because that's a nice thick jacket. Um, so that's probably good, caribou, uh, elk maybe. I don't know if I'd use it for moose and certainly not for bison because that is just an accident waiting to happen. Bullet like this, not so much. You can also get bullets and here's two of them. One is 30, one in caliber 30 and one in caliber 458. This 30 caliber, that's a 180 grain AccuBond. These bullets are bonded, which means that that lead is chemically bonded to the copper, almost like soldered on there. And that works pretty well. This is a swift A-frame and not only is it bonded to hold it together, but it also has a belt very, very much like the uh, bullet we looked at from Nosler, the Nosler partition. Beautiful. That's the 400 grainer. How beautiful is that? So that's a cross between a Nosler partition and a bonded bullet. And this is a straight bonded bullet. Uh, that will stay together as one unit. It'll lose about 30% of its weight. This will lose about uh, 15 to 20% of its weight and keep going. So interesting. The other type of bullet is a homogeneous bullet. This is an old, old example of a Barnes X bullet. There we go. And these Barnes X bullets are all copper. It's got a little hollow point in there. It, it basically expands like an X and that always hangs together and hardly loses any weight. In this case, it started at 200 grains. It went to 198. The newest are the TSX bullets or TTSX bullets. And they have little grooves that put the pressure down and uh, allow for a little better velocities. But even these old X bullets were pretty darn good bullets for big, big stuff. Now a little bit about caliber. Um, caliber is actually fairly important. Here's a 30 caliber bullet after expansion compared to a 35 caliber bullet. You can see it's quite a bit larger. And there's a 458 bullet. This 458 bullet has twice the cross-sectional diameter, in this case after expansion, than that 308 bullet. So you've got double the volume of wound that you're creating with a bigger bullet. So there's an old saying, there's no uh, replacement for displacement. That's a reason why. So what all did we learn today? Um, 30 odd six. I have a friend, Nick, who's killed a lot of uh, bison with 30 odd six with no problems, but he shoots carefully and he uses good bullets. He uses uh, A bonds or Acubonds or something like that and puts them where they're supposed to. Uh, more horsepower is not a bad thing, but that comes with experience. You got to make sure you shoot them well. So do a lot of shooting and you can go up from 30 odd six if you don't. 30 odd six is pretty good. Last word. In fact, I would rather have a 30 odd six with good bullets than my 458 Winchester with bullets that fall apart. Like the 400 Winchester, I could load 400 grain flat points that would just blow up completely at 2400 feet per second and not go through both lungs. So a 30 odd six, I could have a 200 grain woodlay bullet that would go right through the animal. Which would you rather have? Bullet choice is just as important or maybe more important than caliber choice.